I love Lala. La. Would you believe, Cero, that I genuinely do not know what Riz means? I think it's a, a Zoomer word for cool or something like that. Uh, it, it, it may be uh, ethnically uh, particular. Like, if you use it, you may be guilty of cultural appropriation, is what I'm trying to say. You, you need to frame things. You need to frame things in a way that the academia likes. Uh, if you say it, it's what black people say, that's racist. But if you say it, uh, you can't use it because the, then you're guilty of cultural appropriation, then uh, you are already an enlightened person, a decent member fit for society. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, happy Trans Visibility Day. We're going to actually discuss about this phenomenon because a lot of people don't understand. It's like, well... Every single company has the Jeff Bezos flag. You got the Amazon flag. Like, like what more visibility is required? So we're going to discuss about the philosophy behind this uh, important American event. It's, it's becoming an American tradition. Uh, the president himself said, the, the year of our Lord, I decree that this day forward, on March the 31st, it's going to be the visibility day. Um, Joe Biden is like Jesus, curing you from blindness. You did not see, but Joe Biden opened your eyes, and now, now you're going to see. Hold on. I, I think I have the best picture for this, actually. Uh, th th this is my favorite one. You know, like, if there was an image that could describe Trans Visibility Day worth a thousand words, it would be this, wouldn't it? All right, like, very famous Netflix uh, movie accurately describing what Joe Biden is doing to, to America right now, opening their eyes so that they can see, finally. Uh, um, isn't it beautiful, right? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, apparently if you look at the calendar, uh, someone actually made the list, uh, and they came up that 100 days out of the calendar, so a third of the calendar. Uh, according to activists, is uh, filled with visibility days of some form or another. Uh, whether it's like uh, gender polyamory, uh, gender aromatic. Oh, here we go, right. So so many of you probably did not know, but this is taking place, right? Like, this is legit. Um, a third of the year, right? You got all these visibility days. You got uh, aromantic, aromantic spectrum awareness week. I sound so intelligent when I say these things. The terminology makes me sound as if I actually graduated from the American Academia. I went to Harvard. Look, a romantic. Has anyone in your family used these words? A romantic spectrum awareness? Of course not, because you come from a dumb, uneducated family of peasants. I am an intellectual. I went to the... I, I know how to speak proper. Proper. Uh, LGBTQIA+. See, again, proper speech. Like the, the way that the peasant communicate with one another. No, like the way the academic circles interact. You know, when I, when I actually uh, started this, um, <clears throat> it was just LGBT. In 2016, it was LGBT. Now it's QIA+. I wonder if in four years from now we're going to get like four more letters. Like eventually you're going to end up with the entire alphabet, won't you? I mean, the way things are going. It's a slippery slope, is it? The thing that I don't get it is that they already have the plus, right? So, like, the plus represents etc. Why do they keep adding letters if they already added the plus? Do you think they can add an, another plus? It will be, like, double plus good. Uh, but anyway, right, so Transgender Day of Visibility is today. International Asexuality Day will come um, four days after my birthday. International Day of Pink which is a day opposing homophobia. Uh, April 14th, Day of Silence. I don't know what the fuck that means. Someone please tell me. What is Day of Silence? Isn't silence equals violence? Huh? Isn't that Day of Silence? Lesbian Visibility Day. Another day against homophobia. Oh my God, homophobia gets two days. Wait, so, so like on April the 13th, you only get to celebrate International Day of Pink, right? The day opposing homophobia. But, but biphobia and transphobia get a pass until you get to May the 17th, which... Huh? This is interesting. 
Uh, do you think, like, the activists talked with each other, or did they just, like, pick these days at random? Uh, anyway, a gender pride day. A gender pride day. Harvey, Harvey Milk Day. What, what is Harvey Milk Day? No, you know what? I, I'm actually going to look for this. I'm, I'm curious. Harvey Milk Day. Harvey Milk Day. So according to this, Harvey Milk Day is organized by the Harvey Milk Foundation and celebrated every year. In memory of Harvey Milk, a gay rights activist was assassinated in 1978. I see. So it's like uh, it's like the Christian calendar with the saints, right? Like Saint John Baptiste, he died on when it was it? I think it's like June. Is isn't June with with Saint Baptiste? Like he got decapitated, right? So like that day is now a Red Cross day. Like you don't work during that day according to the Orthodox calendar. Basically, from what I understand, like Harvey Milk has been sanctified. Is this a proper comparison? Because we don't have, like, JFK Day. We don't we don't have, you know, like, when a famous politician passed away. Like, we don't have, uh, let's think about in history, like, like, famous politicians that were up to doing good, but unfortunately they were taken away from us too fast. Um, Teresa, May, Teresa May doesn't get a date, does she? Right? No, like, she, she hasn't been sanctified. Like, you need to be sanctified in order to get a date. Stonewall Day, International LGBTQ Plus Day, International Non-Binary People Day, International Drag Day. Is drag now a sexuality? Because I feel like drag is just like a profession. It's kind of like being a stripper, right? Like you, you perform the pole dancing, which is an art. But in the case of drag, it's all about the makeup and the... But, but it's still like an adult performance, right? I, I didn't think it's like a sexuality. Why don't furries get a day? I think there's more furries than people that do drag. There's probably like an intersection between the furries and the drag. The furries don't get a day. Entire month of October, LGBT History Month. See, this is what I've been talking about. It's LGBT, right? Like this is what I used to know. But but if you look at this one, LGBTQIA+. You, you kind of get to know which one was added before and when, which one was added later. So, entire month of June is Pride Month, entire month of October is LGBT History Month, entire month of November is Trans Awareness Month. <clears throat> Three months that make you aware of human sexuality. And, and they tell me that I'm obsessed with sex when I want a pretty woman in a AAA game. It's like your porn obsessed Kumar. And then I look at this, and it's like three months a year, non-stop talking about sex-related things. Sex, 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 sex. It's like, you know, I play video games like one, maybe two hours a day. And, and even then, there, there's days that I take breaks. I'm not that obsessed. <laughs> All right. Um, it's not a sexual. It's not. I know. Bullcrap. It's not, but it's being treated as such for some reason. I think it's like uh, drag is like Schrodinger's sexuality. Uh, normally it's not, but if you start criticizing it, like why are you reading drag stories? Uh, sorry, why, why are you reading uh, stories to kids while dressed in drag? Then you are, you know, some sort of bigot because you're picking on the man's sexuality, I suppose. Uh, so an American asked an English, hey, what's uh, trans... Setiet? Are they Scottish? Uh, the English man says what? The American says he wears a kilt, obviously. They created trans people. You know, like, they, they are getting really upset if you call the kilt a dress. I always wanted to wear a kilt, though. It, it looks comfortable. Uh, SRC Maker for $25. Thank you very much. Uh, all, all this activist stuff has ruined it for normal trans people that just want to live and let live and fly under the radar and just live a regular life. Uh, that is true. I, I have uh, several trans people that donate to my uh, subscribe star, and they are also fed up with this. And in fact, like all of this is making their life more difficult rather than easy. Um, because the, the whole process is, at least the way that uh, things were presented to me back in 2016, was to normalize the lifestyle, right? So, like, normalizing means 
hey, I'm doing my thing. It's not hurting you. You can do your thing, right? But uh, the idea was like, what happens in my bedroom is none of your business. However, in the present, the bedroom is being stuffed down your throats. And how is it being stuffed down your throats? Well, the, you know, you get it in every single sort of entertainment. Like uh, right now, there's this famous game, Hell Divers. And in Hell Divers, there are no politics. But but it's like they're like, oh, well, why can't we have the transgender flag in Hell Divers? I, well, why would you? I mean, the game takes place uh, thousands of years in the future. And uh, why, why would they still have the same symbolism that we have today? How that would even make sense in the lore, right? I mean, they will say all games are political. Yeah, sure, but if a game takes place a thousand years from now, why would they even have the same symbolisms that we use today? Like, like what, what, what symbolisms do we use today that were used a thousand years ago? Probably not, and the ones that we use are just influenced, but they're not the exact same, right? So it's like... That, that's why you can't have it. And that's why you should get banned from the forums because that's what the developers did. And they started crying and saying, oh my God, we got banned from the forums. Uh, Toroshi, why can't we have mating season if they get the alphabet season? Well, yeah, this is what we're going to be discussing about, right? So uh, like they keep saying visibility. What does visibility mean? You got to understand in the American academia, they use common speech in order to confuse people and play language games. Like, for instance, uh, a collectivist group. You know, it doesn't mean like a group made by a collective. It, it, it has like a different philosophical meaning. Now, now, in this case, when they say visibility, they don't actually mean that you need to see them. Like, like everyone knows that trans people exist. And, and you see it every single June. You, you get to look at all these corporations having the Amazon flag, right? Um and you get to see them in movies and TV shows. In fact, I, I would say that there's more LGBT people at this point in TV shows than there are in reality. Like, unironically, think about it. There is no TV show that comes out from America that doesn't have at least one gay couple in it. Because it's like a requirement. It's a checkbox. Like, we know. If you look on Amazon's webpage, they have an entire thing dedicated to inclusion. And they actually say that every movie has to have it. Right, like it, it's you. You cannot have your movie on Amazon. Like, like if, for instance, you know, my video game, if it was uh, published by Amazon, I would be required to have at least one minority character in it. You know, like at least one black character in it, at least one gay character, if you want it to get published. It's an interesting way of doing censorship. But anyway, right. So the idea is that you already see it. Right, like it's already visible. So what do they mean by this? We need a day of short men's visibility? Ha, good luck with that. You know, men like actually wanted one day and everyone is complaining that it's made by a beer company. It's a made up holiday. It's like, well, no fucking shit. All holidays are made up at some point. Uh, American Outlier, hi V. Hope your Easter was enjoyable. You mean Trans Visibility Day, American Outlier. But you know, do uh, you know why Trans Visibility Day comes after Easter? Because first you need to crack the egg. Anyway, right. So, um, <clears throat> what they mean by visibility, and, and they actually try to explain this in various articles, but they don't know how to articulate it. They want everything they do, like, like their entire lifestyle, to be considered just as valid as yours. So in other words, uh, the idea that drag drag queens read story for children like that that should not cause any type of uh, how should i put it not not necessarily concern but, but like what i say it should be normal i mean it's like you know you go buying a loaf of bread like you pay the money for the bread the transaction happens no one even bats an eye like that is a perfect normal thing right so like take into account that definition of normal and apply it to what i've been saying like if a five-year-old wants to identify as a different gender, you know, the five-year-old needs to be humored in, in every single aspect. Like no one should contradict the five-year-old, not the teacher, not the parents, no one, right? Now, if the five-year-old wants to be Superman and, and he wants to, to fly out of a window, then obviously the, the five-year-old needs to have an explanation about, you know, fictional characters and what imaginary friends are. But, but like for some reason, like like the five-year-old, you know, he doesn't really understand life. Like, like if you put the, a million dollars on a desk to a five-year-old and then you put a, a box of Oreos and you ask the five-year-old, hey, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the million dollars or the Oreos? 
And obviously, you know, in most cases, the five-year-old will reach for the Oreo. So, so with that in mind, like, knowing the extent of the imagination of, of a five-year-old who also believes in Santa Claus, uh, if they identify as a different gender, it means that they know, right? So, like, they, they need to be affirmed. That's why they even call it gender affirmation. Like, like they, they don't even question. It's like, well, maybe, you know, he's just pretending or, or he's not... Because, like, the thing is, like, I'm thinking about my childhood. And when I was a kid, I really liked girls that had ponytails. Uh, so I asked my mom to leave me a ponytail. And I think I had it for, like, two or three years. You know, it was, like, a thing. But, like, I didn't identify as a girl. I also played with dolls. It was just, like, a thing that I did. It's, it's not that I identified with girls. Like, I didn't even have the concept of womanhood. I didn't even have the concept of a gender. I didn't even understand any of these things. I was just a child, right? So I'm really glad that I didn't have university professors lecturing my teachers on how to affirm me and, and make absolutely sure that, uh, you know, that they set me on the correct path. But anyway, right, so, like, when they say visibility, they mean that those decisions that they take, right, like... Uh, um, making these irreversible things like cutting the breasts uh, out, off of a uh, healthy 16-year-old's chest, um, cutting the penis off a person, like, like all of these things, they, they need to be considered just as normal as you going to Sunday church, right? Like that lifestyle, that, that behavior needs to, to be considered honorable and respected. And that's what they mean by visibility. Right? Like, like when they say we need to be seen, that's what it means. It, it, it means that they need to be treated with the level of respect and dignity that everyone else is treated. The thing is, though, and, and, and this is where the interesting part is. Like, like, even if everyone was to give them exactly what they want, they do not reciprocate. And by they, I mean, you, you can go on Twitter and you can see how people who are usually partaking in the more woke ideology behave. They do not reciprocate. They view that if you take your five-year-old to Sunday church, they view that as child abuse. Because, like, they will say that... The, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you heard these arguments before on the internet. But they will say, if you take your five-year-old to Sunday church, you're indoctrinating the child because he does not have the mental capacity to be able to differentiate between the natural and the supernatural. That the child is, is basically being taken advantage of. Like, he is innocent and... And he doesn't know that the priest is uh, indoctrinating him. Like, they will not respect your lifestyle. They, they, they do not reciprocate. The woke ideologues do not reciprocate. They, they view that if a white family goes to church every Sunday morning, they, they view that as harmful. Obviously, not every single one, right? But, but it's a sufficient staggering amount, at least on Twitter, and I assume that in the academia as well, to the point where, yeah, like, it, it doesn't feel... As a two-way street, you know, the respect doesn't go both ways. The tolerance doesn't go both ways. And because of that, you're now forming an aristocratic class. Like, you're forming the same idea that existed in the medieval time. You know, the knight, the knight has honor, is, is an honorable person. He, he uh, is a pillar of the community. He's an important member of society. Uh, meanwhile, the peasant has no honor. The peasant is part of the masses. He is dumb. He is ignorant. He is the unwashed masses, you know? And, and you have, like, this exact same mindset that is formulating in the United States of America. Like, you have the people that are worthy of respect and dignity, which usually are the woke people. And then you have the unwashed masses that require education, that, that require enlightenment, that, that you know, the, they, they need to be uplifted. But at the end of the day... You know, can you really uplift a peasant? I mean, you can try, but, you know, he's still not going to have the noble concept of honor. He's never going to be as educated as us, you know, us being the journalists, uh, the game developers, uh, the, the consultancy groups like Sweet Baby Inc. Like, you will never be at their level. Like, no matter what you do, you're, you're always going to be ignorant. And you, you can study medicine, you can study law, you, you can be, you know, like an intelligent person. But, but unless you study the real sciences, unless you actually delve into gender ideology and, and you become a PhD professor in lesbian dance master, and then you think exactly the correct things, like you're not allowed to deviate, right? Uh, because you saw what happened with Peterson, if, even if you do have the credentials. The moment you go astray, the moment you think differently, well, now you're a problem, so they will take your credentials away. 
So, so unless you do exactly what they want, then, then you're not really uh, a person that's worthy of respect. And, and, and what's more interesting, and, and this is what I noticed, right? It's that <clears throat> there is a circle of elites, like, like a circle of nepotism and networking. So, so even if you do everything correct, like, like uh, the, the, the person, for instance, that set himself on fire with Free Palestine, right? Like that guy, uh, he was a, a white activist, um, and no one can question. You know, you can say a lot about him, but you can't question his dedication to the cause, right? Like, like no one can say, well, he was faking it or he was grifting. Like, no, the, the guy that did that was definitely 100% leftist ally, right? But, but after he passed away, people on Twitter were saying, rest in power. And immediately they were pointing out, no, you can't say that because he's white, you know. What, what they're actually saying is he's not part of the network. Like, he is not connected. He is not somebody. Meanwhile, if you look at someone like Sean King, you know, if you say rest in power to Sean King, that's fine because he is connected. He is, he is part of the establishment. It's kind of like the frat houses of old. Where you had like the skull and bones thing that everyone knew each other, you know, like if you are a Bush or if you are a Clinton, then, then you're connected, like you, you are in the club. And if you're in the club, you're demanding respect and you're worthy of respect. It's kind of the same, right? Like for instance, the, you can go out and you can donate all of your livelihoods to environmentalist causes. You, you can do, uh, you know, all you can in order to help the planet, but you're not Greta Thunberg, right? You're not connected. You do not have the network. You you did not shake the correct hands, uh, and, and that's why like if if you shake the correct hands and you have the message, like both are required. You need to have the message and you need to shake the hands. Then you actually become an important member of society. Th then you are worthy of dignity and respect. But if you only pass the message, then you you're not in. You're you're still not in. And and no matter how hard you pass the message, no matter how hard you believe. No, no matter, like, none of these matter. It, it, it's like, <clears throat> you need to be anointed. Like, you need to be recognized by, by the official clique. You're raising your kid with your beliefs. Uh, sounds like indoctrination. You should raise uh, your kid with my beliefs instead, says uh, Versina Jetrox. Well, here's the thing. Um, a lot of people say, well, you know, leftists don't have kids, so that's good because there's going to be less leftist ideology in the world, right? Like, if you're a right-winger and you view leftist ideology as being detrimental, then you're going to say, well, at least they're not having kids, right? So in the future, I'm having kids, I'm a conservative, I'm having kids, so my ideology is going to be propagated. However, the reality is completely different. The reality is that in the future... The, the left-leaning individual, he's got a lot of time on his hands. He's got a lot of uh, resources now because he doesn't have a family. He's got all the time in the world to indoctrinate your kid, right? So when you're at work and uh, you're, you're busy for eight hours and you don't get to see your child, the leftist does, you know, and he sees your child through entertainment, through video games, through cartoons, through movies, through, through all these other things. He gets to, to talk with your child and educate your child. And his life is very appealing, right? Because your kid is going to look up at you and is like, wow, daddy is working so hard for so little, right? Because you have a family, you have obligations. And meanwhile, the leftist, you know, he's uh, very happy, gets to partake in all of his hobbies, has uh, unrestricted freedom. He's, he's very enticing, very appealing to a teenager. So uh, it's, it's not like that. It's not like, oh, well, they don't have kids. And not to mention, like, you, you get to see... The borders can always be opened, and, and more people can always come in. And they can take your taxpayer money in order to give welfare to, to encourage even more. Ironically, the rainbow was adopted as the symbol of gay rights to pay homage to God's promises to Noah after the flood. I actually did make this joke. It's like, uh, you know, you, you see in Scat Francisco, like a gay parade, and they're, they're flouting the rainbow. It's like, hey, God, remember your promise. God, you... It's your promise. Right? You, you signed it in colors. Look. Uh, unless you have a lot of money or you are willing to live in the woods, you need to be part of the system. Even if you live in the woods, you, you kind of need to be part of the system. But, but it's true. You know, there are certain places where you can go. Like, like if you read history, even in the Soviet Union, even in China today, 
Uh, even in Nazi Germany, there are certain places, his villages uh, on the outskirts, places in the mountains where you can live. You, you don't have to be like a woodchucker. You don't have to be the Amish. Uh, but, but the government has limited resources, believe it or not. L like sending people in the woods in order to impose the correct thinking... Even the government doesn't want to do that. Like, like if you go somewhere far away, uh, away from the cities, because that's that's usually how the government operates, right? Like the, the ideological crackdown in a totalitarian regime happens in the city. <clears throat> and as further you go away from the cities, you get less of it. Um, so if you, if you want to live in the mountains somewhere, in a small village, you can. You know, you may lose your internet access, you may lose your social media, you may lose even your uh, credit cards, but at the end of the day, you, you, you can live a, a life that is similar to what people lived in the 70s uh, in one of those villages. So it, it is theoretically possible to still uh, have a normal functioning life, even if you are in a totalitarian system. Um, they definitely want to do that. I mean, wanting and, and being able to are two different things. For instance, when Romania had communism, we had a lot of people that uh, opposed communists in the mountains. So uh, we, I think they, were called, they, they weren't called high Dutch, but they, they, they had a different name. Anyway, we like resistance fighters in the mountains. Do you know what the government did? Absolutely nothing. It's like, okay, well, we got like uh, a couple of thousands of people that are opposing our regime in the mountains. Uh, do we send anyone to fight them? No. Why not? They're contained. I mean, they're, they're over there. We know where they are. They're not doing any damage. How many people? Okay. Well, I mean, we can crack down and then divert resources in order to bring them to heal. And then what do we obtain? Well, we obtain another thousand compliant citizens. Not worth it. That's what the government thinks. I mean, it's it's the people that are making this uh, legislation, they're, they're very cynical about it. They really don't care. It's not like a comic book villain that wants to oppress everyone. No, they, they, they want to oppress enough people so that they always remain in power. That, that's the purpose of the ruling elites. They, they do not care about, oh, well, we need to oppress 100%, every single one. No, if they manage to get like a, an oppression level of 70%, they're, they're very fine with it. They're, they're, they're happy. You know, like even with the vaccines, no country managed to get their vaccination rate to 100%. Neither did they care. I mean, yeah, they can threaten people. They can do whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, like if they got like a 80% vaccination rate, they would call it a success. So it's it's not something that can be done. You, you cannot oppress 100% of the population, no matter how much you try. And, and the government at some point even loses interest because, um, you know, you, you, it's easy to oppress the people in the cities. Like it's very easy to get to like a 60% level of oppression and control. But after that, it becomes more costly. And, and, and if you divert resources to oppress, like, even the people in the mountains, uh, then you lose the resources required to oppress the people in the cities, which are more important to be oppressed, because, like, that's where most of the economy is, and that's where the politicians live as well. So, so you want to focus the oppression in the cities. That's why uh, you have, like, this... Um, uh, in history, like places that uh, were in China or the Soviet Union where they still had freedom and, and they just lived away from the cities. They, they were either at the outskirts or in the mountains or, or close to forests, you know, pl places where the government didn't care about. Um, Such a high-pitched voice. Well, I'm sorry, you know, I, I need to pump myself a little bit with some testosterone. What What can I do? I need to transition to, to a more masculine version of myself. Uh, right, so, did you guys watch uh, the Jim Medeker stream? I think it was uh, pretty sad. You know, like, a lot of people are, uh, are telling me that uh, I, I should be upset about Jim or anything. I, I always find him, like, a good comedian. I, I always enjoyed his videos. And uh, to hear what he's going through is quite disheartening. I, I'm also one of the few from my circle that actually believe that he was sick. And it uh, doesn't give me any pleasure to find out he is right. But um, if you guys want, you should check out his last stream. I, I would definitely encourage you. It was... Um, I, I don't know how to put it. It wasn't entertaining. 
it was a good stream, let's put it like this. Yes, buy a hat for your hat. So uh, it's it's sad to, to see what's happening and uh, hopefully... You know, at, at this stage that he described it, I, I don't think he can survive. Like, I, I looked at the, the symptoms and, and what he described. I, I don't think that he can survive it, but uh, I, I hope he can have more content out there for his fans. Let's put it like this. Carol Ann, don't go into the light. It's, it's also like the type of thing when life becomes so difficult that you wonder, uh, you know, if you want to go away from the light i mean jesus uh, having your back broken and experiencing the sensation of giving birth to a kidney stone is uh, probably not that amusing i mean imagine living like that to, to, to uh. anyway um devon tracy got yet another youtube channel banned i i didn't know that devon tracy was still on youtube um all he did was make fun of the Young Turks, from what I understand. So the fact that he keeps getting banned for making fun of the Young Turks, and the Young Turks is like this extremist, radical, far-left organization. I mean, just so you can understand how radical the Young Turks are, right? Anna Kasperian talks about the video, talks about the news story where this guy got uh, killed and, and chopped to bits. The police came in and they saw so much blood that they concluded the apartment is unlivable. And they arrested the guy and the guy was then released without bail, right? So an obvious danger to society, a menace is on the streets. And Anna was saying, well, this is fucked up. And most people agree with Anna. It's not a left-wing, right-wing issue. It's just an issue of common sense versus bizarre, ideological, luxurious beliefs. Uh, and... That video got unlisted by the Young Turks, right? So Anna basically speaks some common sense and the video gets unlisted. And, and I know why it got unlisted. It's because despite the fact that Cenk says, oh, it's only a couple of people that disagree with you. No, th th there were leftist podcasts that were making fun of Anna and basically saying that, uh, you know, she's a betrayer and she's a right winger now. Don't forget that he can't even talk about his medical problems in public because Ralph and the others will just dox and harass his doctors. Well, I mean, it is the community that he fostered. What can I say? It's uh, it's it's not only that though. I it, it's also the fact that if you are a celebrity, like like he was getting ten thousand viewers per stream. When you're at that level. Private information is best not shared, right? Like, you notice that even actors that uh, are very famous, when, when they get sick, they don't share their information, right? Like, he, even politicians, like the, the king of England, like, he said he has cancer, but he's not going to show you his research and, and his... Because, again, uh, like, normally people behave in a socially acceptable manner. But but when you have tens of thousands of people, it is a matter of statistics. Like, like there are individuals that are unhinged and individuals that uh, commit socially unacceptable acts. And if you have like a hundred pe people, then that can be one. If you have a thousand, that can be 10. If you have 10,000, it can be a hundred. And the number keeps growing as uh, you, you're exposed to larger and larger crowds. And out of those uh, 1,000 people that may be unhinged, uh, a couple of them may actually have the technological know-how to figure out how to fuck with you better. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that Jim can talk about these things with his friends and his family. I mean, he does look like a charismatic guy. I do think he has friends. I don't think he just lives with his wife. So, so and at the end of the day, these are issues that you don't want to share with strangers on the internet anyway. Um... He, uh, so Devin Tracy just made a video about the stupidity of the fake bloodbath narrative. Uh, I, I also think that Devin Tracy, by, by making fun of the Young Turks, is probably antagonizing a lot of leftists that are fans of the Young Turks and they're constantly reporting his videos. I, I think this is what happens. And, and when you say bloodbath over and over in a video, uh, it does sound like you're asking for violence, right? So YouTube works a lot with algorithms and snitches. 
So, so if you have people that snitch, and especially if they trigger something that the algorithm looks for, well, that's probably what keeps uh, getting Devon Trace's channel taken down. In your eyes, uh, what is more of an issue, far-left extremists or far-right extremists, or both equal? In my eyes, politicians are uh, pushing for an extremism. Like, it also depends where you live, right? And it also depends, like, who you are as a person. Like, obviously, if you're a black person living in a place surrounded with the Ku Klux Klan, then from your point of view, right-wingers are going to be the extremists and then they're going to be the immediate threat, right? But from my point of view, the extremists are the people that are constantly increasing my cost of living. And the reason that they are a threat is because they're in power, right? Like right now, I do not know any member of the KKK or actual Nazi that is in power. But I do know people that, uh, for instance, want to abolish gas. I think those people are mentally deficient and mentally challenged. I, I do not know how they believe that people in the woods are going to heat their homes during the winter if they do that. Or the people that want to remove the gas stoves in the European Union. Again, same issue. Like, there are people that aren't connected to gas in Romania, you dumbasses. Or, or people that want cashless societies. It's like, well, most of Romania do not use credit cards. Like, outside of the cities, in the rural areas, there are people that do not use credit cards. Like, you want to kill those people? Because that's what you're pretty much asking for, right? So, like, this is an extreme mistake, a cashless society. Uh, those people are in power. They're making legislation. I, I do view them as a bigger threat, yes. Then, uh, then I view like uh, you know some violent individuals that can be solved by the cops. I'll tell you this: whenever you have like right wing extremists, there there is no one that defends them. Like, like immediately the authorities go in, like uh, the government is able to see what they posted online, and then all the social media collaborates, and you you have like the entire state apparatus that cracks down on right wing extremists. But when you have leftist extremists, everyone makes excuses. Again, like, like the uh, individual that Anna Kasperian talked about, the one that uh, hacked a man into pieces and then uh, tried to bury the corpse. Well, uh, they were making excuses, saying that uh, you don't know the type of life that he had. Like, he can come from poor socioeconomic conditions. And uh, it's good that we have bail reform because finally, you know, we're, we're more uh, open-minded and more progressive in this nature. And it's like, well, no. No, you know, like, like, here's the thing, right? Like, the, the perfect example with Anna, right? If that guy was a right-wing MAGA Trump supporter, no one would make excuses. Everyone would be like, why isn't he arrested? There would be protests in front of the judge, like, no. And they would be like, all MAGA people do this, right? But because uh, we don't know, uh, it's like, come on, you know, poor socioeconomic factors. So yeah, I, I do think that, uh, first of all, I don't care about left-wing and right-wing extremists. I, I care about populist versus establishment, and I do feel, think that the people that are in power right now making legislations uh, are a bigger threat than the people that aren't in power. Especially legislation that, uh, you know, lower my, li my living standards or increase crime rate and, and make the streets more dangerous. Yeah, that, that's a bigger threat. That than some individuals that go out there with ticket torches and whatnot. Like those, those, those individuals with ticket torches, are they CEOs? Are, are they politicians? Are they? No. Okay. Right. Naruhodo. Um, I hope that answer manages to satisfy your curiosity. The crisis is coming soon. Well, the crisis is always coming. By the way, um, the video game Helldivers, a lot of people keep saying that uh, it's based on fascism. I don't think it's based on fascism at all. I think it's based more on uh, our government system. So in Helldivers, uh, Earth is championing democracy, <clears throat> right? Like this is the biggest virtue. So the biggest virtue of Earth is not uh, freedom or liberty. It's democracy. So it's this ambiguous term. And it's like, well, hold on a little bit. This is what our establishment wants. Like they, they are like, yes, America promotes democracy. Democracy is not a value that is admirable. 
the founding fathers of the United States actually talked about this, and they said if, if you just have unrestrained democracy, then you're going to have a couple of interest groups that will just keep voting for one another, and they will remain in power forever, at the detriment of everyone else. Like just by having democracy, means that you can have the minorities genuinely oppressed, right? You you go back to a system of um, kind of like a medieval society where you have the aristocracy, the aristocracy, and everyone else, right? So you have the haves and the haves nots. And as long as the aristocracy keeps giving free shit to people in exchange for votes, they can remain in power forever. So uh, that is the system that Helldivers has. It's, it's not a fascist system, right? Because fascism uh, doesn't have democracy. But, but it's more of a controlled democracy, more, more of something that... Um, the, the way controlled democracy works is that you have, like, the illusion of democracy. Um... As long as the results go in favor of the establishment, then everything is working as intended. But when the results don't go in favor of the establishment, oh, then it's fine. We vote again and again and again until they actually work. And when they actually work, then it's established. Um, the, the perfect example was, and, and I keep giving this because it's uh, something that's etched into my brain with Eurovision. So Eurovision, Romania has this... Uh, beautiful lady that, that managed to sing with the voice of an angel. And uh, everyone liked her. Like, like everyone was voting for her. She was supposed to represent Romania. Uh, but they found out that in the gay referendum, she voted incorrectly, right? Like this is a lady that uh, sings at the church choir, so you kind of can figure out how she voted. Um, and, and despite the fact that the public wanted her, the jury stepped in and said, no, she's not going to be elected. And, and they nominated someone that was gay. So in other words, if the public would have voted for anyone else, then the public would have gotten their say and they would say, well, it was a democratic decision. It was a democratic vote. But because the public didn't vote correctly, then the experts stepped in and said, no, Right, so, so you have the illusion of voting. Like, as long as you vote for the correct thing, then, then the illusion of voting exists. But the moment you vote for the incorrect thing, then they step in. And that is managed democracy. That is what you get in hell divers. Uh, even the meme of the dog drawing contest held on Twitter. Uh, first place is like a toddler drawing, and second place is a photorealistic illustration. The the thing is, I, I don't know much about it, but take into account that a lot of these voting competitions can be influenced by various factors. Uh, people don't usually vote for just what the competition is about. Uh, like, there is, there is this perfect uh, skit, this comedy skit, from one of these, uh, you know, singing competitions. And you have this guy that can sing very well. And then comes another guy that can't sing for shit, but he comes with this very emotional story. And he's like, oh, I grew up by myself in an orphanage. And uh, life is hard. And I lost an arm. And now I'm diagnosed with cancer. And I'm pregnant. And, you know. Uh, so the jury is, is giving the prize to this guy. Now, now, even though it's a singing competition, and you're supposed to award the best song, just because, like, this guy comes up with this very emotional and touchy story... Everyone votes for them. And, and that's pretty much how life is, you know? Like, um, it's not that everything is subjective. It, it's more like um, people care more about appearances than the actual thing. Like, people forget that they're at a singing competition and they should uh, reward the singing rather than the story that comes behind the, the artist. Uh, grats on your new updated status on Schengen. Does that help you at all? Well, I guess I don't have to sit at the airport at security. No, I, I actually, you know what? I like the airport security. I, I'm not like an American that goes like, oh my God, airport security is horrible, you guys. Oh, oh, I'm getting pat down. Oh, I'm going to cry now. No, airport security is fucking awesome. I, I know for sure that there isn't someone that brings something on the plane. Um, and, and actually, you know what? I, I did like the checks and balances. I, I really like the fact that people were frisked 
add the security. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't like the fact that we're in Schengen. Not at all. No, no. Uh, I, I preferred when we weren't and we had a border with the European Union so that we can frisk them and they can frisk us. It was a lot better. Uh, but yeah, no, like now everyone can uh, just travel from France to Romania, Romania to France, no checking, no nothing, it's just like, okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I don't think it's that worse. I, I, don't, I don't think like it's the end of the world. I don't, I don't think like bad stuff is going to happen because of it. Uh, but, but I like the security. Unironically, I did like it. Yeah, pat me down harder. The, the thing is, like, we, we didn't have uh, the, the pat-downs. Um, what, what we did have is, like, you, you go to the airport, and uh, you walk through this metal detector, and if that shit went beep, then they would pat you down. If that shit didn't went beep, they allowed you to move away, right? So, I, there was no pat-down. Pat-down for what? You should be able to carry minimum 15 guns on a plane. Well, what was it there like a... The, the thing that I don't get, I mean, all, all of the hysteria around planes is very easily debunked. Uh, when I went to London the first time, I wanted to bring Sargon a souvenir from Romania. And there was like this keychain that was uh, shaped like a sword. It was made from metal, but it wouldn't cut or anything, right? So... The border guard, they looked at it and they said, no, this is uh, five centimeters and you're only allowed to carry pointy objects that are four centimeters. You're not allowed to bring it on board. And I'm like, oh, shit, fuck it. Okay. You know, I threw it away, whatever. But then when you get into the airport, so you're past security, you realize that you can buy a bottle of wine. And I'm like, okay, so I, I can't get a keychain. Because it can be used as a weapon, but I can get a bottle of wine. Like, you do realize that you can do damage with that if you, if you really want to. You break it. And now you have a broken glass bottle. Like, right? Like, like, does that make any sense? Not to mention, um, I, I think it's the same stuff. Like, you, you can't carry liquids on the plane that are bigger than a bottle of uh, some milliliters. And I'm like, but I can buy it from the airport, though. And I think, unironically, I think these laws are to benefit airports. Because what's the idea, right? Like you can't get past security with certain things. And like most people don't, don't bring criminal stuff on the plane anyway, right? Like, like most people bring souvenirs and stuff, right? Or, or stuff that you want on a plane, like drinks and, and such. So, so they don't allow you to, to get drinks. They don't allow you to get that stuff. So you buy them from the plane. So you buy them from the airport. I think like this is the actual purpose of, of this type of legislation. It's not to keep the plane safe. But it's more like to persuade you from spending money at the airport. Because otherwise it doesn't make sense. I, I genuinely like don't understand it. It's like, well, why can't I have my bottle of water? Oh, because it's dangerous. Because what if you break it and then it... Yeah, but like I can, I can buy a bottle of wine from within. After I get past security. <sighs> Careful if you're a brown dude in the airport. Well, you know, like, dude, if there were a couple of Romanians that uh, were, were flying, uh, so if there were a couple of Romanians that hijacked planes and stuff, and uh, after that people were very skeptical of Romanians, you know, it would be unfair, but I would at least understand where it's coming from. Like, part of the conversation is to pretend that we, it's just from the ether. It's a, it was always this way. It's, it's just an unhinged... No! You know, like, like, this is what the left likes to do. They, they pretend that the action doesn't happen and that the reaction is the action. No, 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 no. Like, there, there is a reason for, for this... Uh, Heightened security. If I'm a Sikh and I have a knife for religious purposes, am I allowed? I genuinely don't know. But Sikhs never hijacked the plane, so I guess... I, I have no clue. I, I think you may be allowed, actually. Because, like, religious reasons uh, bypass a lot of things. Like, if you're, um, for instance, uh, a Quaker, you don't get drafted, so... 
Probably depends from country to country. L like uh, religious countries, like the Middle East, would probably not allow you. Like if you have, uh, you know, a country like Saudi Arabia, they're like, no. Unless you're a Muslim and you have like some Muslim requests, no. I will have to actually look into it if six are allowed to carry knives on play. I, I know that six are allowed to carry knives in London. Yeah, no, like on the London street, you're not allowed to have knives unless you're a Sikh. If you're a Sikh, you can carry a knife. <laughs> Why is security? My religion requires that I carry this machine gun everywhere I go. And ironically, if you can convince <clears throat> a million people or so to start worshipping the machine gun and you create like this cult of worshipping the machine gun, like, like you're actually venerating and praying for it, well, actually, a million people is too, too low. Ten million. If you, if you get, like, ten million people to, to genuinely worship weapons, right? But unironically so. Like, you, you believe in the divinity of the firearm. And, and you manage to keep this up for a hundred years. Then you would actually be able to make the argument that it is your religious right to have a machine gun on the plane. That's what you gotta do. That's, uh... <laughs> Because at the end of the day, right, like what, what is the difference between a religion and a cult? It's The cult is something recent. It just started. But if you manage to maintain a cult for a long period of time with enough believers, it becomes a religion. License in America? There are states where you need license to carry. Hey. And especially if you have like a... Firearm, like a full semi-automatic, like CNN likes to call them, right? Like a full semi-automatic ghost gun, full semi-automatic ghost gun weapon of war. If you have one of those, uh, you do need a license. This is why Fallout New Vegas is a must play. In most states, it's harder to get machine guns than in Europe. I, I, I have no clue. I live in a country where the idea of a gun is something outlandish. Like a citizen carrying a weapon is just, no. By the way, it's uh, 1st of April, right? Did you guys seen any, any cool 1st of April stuff? When I was a kid, it, it was a nice holiday, I guess, 1st of April. But now it's uh, just an annoying thing. And, and it's annoying because you go onto certain websites and they decide to, you know, make these jokes that, like, for instance, uh, reverse the UI, reverse the letters, making them more difficult to read. And, and it's like, oh, come on, really? Yeah, tomorrow it's my birthday, by the way. I, I always, like, had this problem when I was a kid because I, I was born on 2nd of April. And um, what ends up happening is that I, I would invite kids on my birthday on 1st and they would think it's a nice idea to give me an April Fool's and lie about their presence, their attendance. And I, I did have this issue when I was, like, uh, 7, 8 years old. It was very sad. But then I grew up and... Uh, I realized that I should make my invitations earlier or celebrate my birthday any other day besides second. Palworld has a fake dating sim man. The, the worst thing that I had, the, the cruelest 1st of April jokes comes from Nikkei. And uh, I, I will show you what I mean in a bit. Yeah, I think this is the one. So so they made this uh, this fake game. Ord. As you know, the Ark is short on manpower right now. So we're assigning you to investigate. And it's like, I want to play this now. Gate this area. Why me? Look how cool it looks. Why is it so fucking awesome? I want to play it. Uh 
Deputy Chief, I think I hear the raptures. Press R2 or Tab to detect the enemies in the surrounding area. Utilize your animal-like... I mean, use your amazing sense as well. Do you know what's cool? And I realize that you don't really need modern graphics. You, you don't need state-of-the-art quadruple-A graphics in order to make an interesting game. Like, like this game has mediocre graphics. Well, it's not even a game. It's just like an April Fool's thing. But it's got like these mediocre graphics and the sound and and, and the, the music and, and the anime girl makes everything else fit. Huh? A rapture? It's like, come on, why why you do this, Nikkei? Why you do this? <laughs> like, I, I, I genuinely want this game now. Yeah, it, it would be shifty. The thing is, it's not that graphics are overrated. Um, like, obviously, you know, if, if a game has, like, jaw-dropping graphics, it can help. Stellar Blade, for instance. Stellar Blade has excellent graphics, right? So, it's not that they're overrated. Like, if you make a game with great graphics, like, that's a plus. But at the same time, if you make a game with great graphics and you make the female character have the Californian man jaw, then I, no. <laughs> Pippa skin wet. <laughs> have you considered that uh, even Mahler is impressed by the story of Stellar Blade? Was he? I don't know. I haven't uh, listened to him. Uh, I did play Stellar Blade, and I want to say that um, I refunded the game. Like, I'm sorry, I refunded the game, and I purchased the Deluxe Edition instead. Right, Th that game is going to be game of the year. There is the, like, you, you will be able to tell the journalist shill if they do not give Stellar Blade game of the year. There is nothing that can compete with it. And the sad part is, you know, like, I, I was expecting a porn game, and I was vastly disappointed, because it's not. It's just a game that looks how you would expect video games to look in 2010. Like, if you've if you got gone back into the past and you asked someone from 2010, hey, how would games look? They would describe Stellar Blade. Yeah, I know the, the April Fool's uh, event where you play as you and it's, it's really hilarious. I loved it. Hello, Katis. Best-selling, most-played game, Minecraft. I see. It's going to be Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There is no fucking way that Final Fantasy VII can even remotely complete with Stellar Blade. Like, like I, I don't believe it. Some games of 20 years ago age very well. Um, Not really. Most of the problems with games that are 20 years ago is that they have the quality of life missing. So so there are some mechanics and some quality of life stuff. Like, like for instance, Baldur's Gate 2, right? Now, now in Baldur's Gate 2, it's an excellent game, and I would, I would fully recommend that people play it. But you have crowd control that can last for one or two minutes. So you go into a battle, and one of your companions gets charmed. Now, now, you win the battle, and your companion remains charmed for two minutes, and you just have to wait. There's nothing you can do. Um, and it's like one of those things. It's like, well, the battle is over. Just remove the fucking charm. There, there's no reason for me to just wait for two minutes artificially. And I know there are spells that you can use in order to cure their charm, but again, like it's, it's the quality of life that's missing. Um, and it's just one minor example, but... It, it, it's small things like that when you play an old game that start to really irritate you. And you're like, well, why isn't this here? Or why is that here? Um, Rebirth is actually a good game. I'm not saying it's not a good game. I'm saying it's not as good as Stellar Blade. It is what it is. It's like, look, it's a, it's a good game, but not as good. Spider-Man 2 still holds up despite being 20 years old. Hey, hold on. Spider-Man 2 came out recently, didn't it? Or are you talking about the movie? 
You probably still get checked at the airport, by the way, just not for your passport. I, I don't know how it works. Like, I, I just saw that they're having two terminals now, one for, like, EU travel within the Schengen area and one for the other areas. Uh, Warcraft 3 is surprisingly good. Unironically, yes. Like, Warcraft 3 is still uh, a good game, but it gets boring really fast. The mechanics are too simple. Um... I mean, I, I know what I need to do to get better. It's just you need to raise your API, but anyway. Uh, APM, not API, sorry. I need to go and uh, release the videos for my main channel now. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the donations. And I'll see you all in the comment section. Take care.